Kao is one of the easiest agents to learn inside Valorant. His kit feels so similar to other FPS style games that it's so easy for a new player to understand and grasp instantly. But because he's so easy to understand, that doesn't necessarily mean he's really good at that level. What you need to know is that Kao has a really low skill floor and a really high skill ceiling. And mastering him is the absolute key to getting the most out of him and not be detrimental on your team. Combined with the fact that Kao isn't quite meta right now as well as I'm doing this video in patch 6.11, it's quite obvious that you need to understand and you use him appropriately to get the most out of him and be effective for your team. Fear not though, because this guide is going to teach you some of the most important tips and some of the tech behind KO and how to maximize your potential all the way. I'm going to go through the kit individually and go and break down each specific part and how they work. And I'm also going to show you a library of where you can find KO lineups. And if you weren't aware, his lineups are the exact same as Killjoy's Molly lineups as well. So if you really wanted to and you knew the Killjoy ones already, you could apply them to your game as well. But this guide is going to be specifically about mastering KO even if you're a new player coming through, if you're an experienced player, there's going to be things that you can learn from this. So stick around, stay tuned, like, subscribe, comment, everything, and uh, let's get into the video. So let's talk about KO's kit a little bit more in game. We'll look at the tool tips, and we'll talk a bit more about them individually, and I'll tell you some things that probably aren't obvious straight away as well. So the first bit of KO's kit that we want to take a look at will be the knife, otherwise known as a zero point. In game, it basically says that it's a suppression blade, you fire it, and it suppresses the target. What that basically means is, is that when you use the knife in a sphere, which if people didn't know, when you use it, it comes in a sphere. It basically suppresses the enemy and stops their abilities being able to be used. This also means that uh, ultimate abilities can't be used, which we'll touch on a bit more later. But um, stuff like Showstopper, Razor Showstopper, or Jets, Bladestorm, etc. can't be used if they're also caught in the knife. So it's really good to use like in a pinch if you're trying to stop something like that from happening to you. But the point is, the knife, when you use it, it appears in a sphere. And on the map as well, you'll see that the radius that it's into, so you can get people that higher, lower, which is really good for maps that, with a bit more verticality. Something like Icebox, maybe it's quite good for it because you can do the lineup and it'll hit, for example, upstairs, downstairs, wherever, or something like B site, maybe where it's quite important. Um, but yeah, so the point is that the knife can use higher, lower, and yeah. The knife can also be shot, however, by the enemy, so just keep that in mind that when you're using it, we'll go a little bit more into the tech of it later and how you can avoid stuff like that happening, but just know that they can shoot it or knife it to destroy it. The next thing I want to talk about is the flashes, and we're going to go into a bit more detail again later on with the flashes, so skip ahead if you want to find out a bit more about them. But the point is, the flashes, if you come from CSGO or something like that, you'll know that you can left-click throw your flash, which we can turn away from, and right-click. The difference is, the left-click goes quite far, as you can see through the trail, through the wall and the right click is short distance as you can see so they have different detonation timers for how they pop and they go different distances uh, depending on the left click and the right click left click is far right click is short the other thing with the the flashes is that if you look directly at them as opposed to sort of them being a little bit more off your off your like center of your screen you'll be flashed more so for example if i use right now and i'm looking straight at it i'll feel the full blind effects whereas if i used it and i'm looking a little bit away i'm only getting popped a little bit by it so like i said we're gonna go a bit more into that later but what that kind of means is that sometimes you can do these flashes just to the side we'll do a really basic thing you do something like that you can turn they're going to be full blind because they're looking this way and you're only going to be partially blind for that split second as you're peeking out and you're you know you're good to go but like i said we're going to get more into that later a bit more in-depth technical about that and uh Anyway, let's move on to the next one. The next bit of kit is the last usual kit that we would have with KO, and it's called the Fragment Grenade. It's a bit like a molly, a bit like a grenade. You might be a little bit familiar with the style of grenade um, from some games, but essentially what happens is you throw it on the ground and it pulses damage. The way the damage works is the closer you are to the center, the more damage it does, with the max being 60 damage every one second, and it pulses four times, so a max of 240 damage. Or if you're on the edge, it pulses for 25 times four, for a maximum of 100 damage. So the idea is that you want to get the target to be as close to the center as possible to receive as much damage as possible. The other things to know are that you can left click throw it like you can with the flash. You can also right click throw it. It changes the distance. It doesn't change the detonation time as like it does with the flashes purely because this only relies on when it hits the ground. So you can also bounce it off things as well to get like a bit of a desired effect maybe later on um, with lineups and stuff. It's quite useful to have it bouncing and stuff like that as well. But yeah, that is basically all the kits so far for KO. The last thing I want to talk about is the ultimate, which is a little bit more in depth. So the last main bit of his kit to talk about is his ultimate. His ultimate, what it says on the tooltip, is basically instantly overload with polarized radionite energy that pulses from KO in a massive radius. Enemies hit with pulses are suppressed for a short duration, while overloaded KO gains combat stim and can be restabilized, blah blah blah. Basically, all that happens is you use your knife as an ability 
on your person and it pulses in a really big radius. It doesn't tell you who's nearby like it does with the knife, but it does the same effect with suppressing them. So abilities and ults and stuff like that can't be used. Like I said, it stops the Razel, it stops Jettle, it stops Sova, it stops a lot of people's ults that are specific to the character themselves. So things like Killjoy, for example, if her ultimate's already down, it can't be stopped. But to prevent her from using it, you can press it before that and she can't use it after that for the next however long the ult lasts. Basically, the ult does last for a really long time as well. But if you die, it ends. If you go down, it carries on slightly. Um, but I'm going to show you now what it looks like when you get ulted. So here's what the ultimate actually looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do this just so we have a bit of a timer going down. So the point is now, if I've got like a flash in my hand or something like that, when you are ulted, you'll see that you are now suppressed. And it will continue pulsing all the way as long as you're in the radius to where you can't use your abilities whatsoever. Just to show you what it looks like as well when you catch someone in the knife, because I forgot to show it. When you use it, you'll get a pop-up on the left side of your screen underneath your map that will tell you how many people have been caught within the knife's radius. Now, the next thing I want to kind of talk about with KO is a little bit more about the tech. Specifically, we're going to talk a bit more about the flash tech and the way that you're going to use it. So the first thing I want to show is just a little bit of how you can apply KO's tech to enable your team to do more with the round. So at the start of the round, for example, on something like Bind right now, I'm going to show you that just a simple flash over the top here, what it essentially does is it pops out all the way into like sort of top mid around this area here. Now, as an attacker, if you're coming through and you're fast picking off the barriers coming down, you're looking about here with the flash popping just about there in your eyesight. So if you have a teammate playing in hookah and you yourself playing here and wanting to do the flash for him, all you got to do is just it's simple in this area, just hit it inside the middle of this rectangle while you're still on top of these boxes in this corner. You simply just throw it and it enables him to go and do a fast peek where the enemies are going to be like full blind. I, this is just like the most simple thing ever, but people don't understand that you can enable your team so much better if you just use things as a setup. This used to happen all the time in CSGO where people would flash for each other, you'd have a support role that literally played perfectly always for that. And this is kind of what the initiator does. But specifically KO is really good at it. Now let's say you're playing solo and you don't want to flash for your team or there's no one to flash for anyway. The best thing to do is you right click flash. If you do a left click flash, somewhere try and get it to pop, it takes a long time, really easy to turn from and it's just kind of bad. The best thing to do is a right click flash. The issue with the right click flash is that it's also kind of slow and it's, you know, if you're someone that's like fast speaking, it's hard to get the timings down perfectly and it's obviously the point about mastering it. The best thing to do though is when you're doing your right click flash out to the side, I would always suggest that you try and do it a little bit more behind you, but as long as it still flashes the area that you're trying to get. And let me explain. If you flash like that, someone has all the time directly of it coming across their screen to react to it. If you get it to pop just here, for example, along this line, where it still sees down there, it's much better than it popping all the way out here. The point is, this and this are probably 50 milliseconds of reaction time difference and playing against some of the top players and trying to get higher in the ranks people are going to be reacting to this one way more than they are going to be reacting to this one the point is the angle of the flash here is so much narrower that it pops so much quicker for them and they can't react so you'll see that's popped just past the barrier of just here and if you do it like this, you can see how far it gets out. It gets all the way halfway out into the walkway. That might have been a bit lengthy, it might have been a bit pointless, but for someone that's trying to learn the fine details and the nitty gritty of how to play KO properly, the flashes and learning where to pop them appropriately are the best. So like I said, just to summarize again, if you want to flash for your team, it's so simple, easiest little lineups. You can go and find them on like websites like tracker.gg and whatever else and go and find them. But specifically, flashing for your team is really easy with a left click if you just coordinate. And flashing for yourself, don't just do the simple right click to the side or whatever, like, don't do that. Try and take your time, think about where you want it to pop, think about how you can reduce their reaction time to your flash so that you have the highest chance of peeking out and getting away with the free. So for example, I'll show you, if you're stood like here and you want to flash someone down there, you flash, you swing, you're a little bit blind for half a second, but they're going to be full blind because they're looking up this way. Apologies if that was lengthy, um, but it's important to get the, the important tech out of the way so that people understand it. While we're still on the topic of flashes, there's some other important little things to know as well. The left click flash, because it takes so long, is a great tool to sort of trick your opponent, much like people do with the sky flash, where they send it but don't pop it. Well, with the KO flash, you can kind of do the same thing. Um, what you essentially want to do is, if you can imagine that someone's playing in a corner like this, somewhere like that, and you're pushing up long, what you can do is rather than try and actually, you know, flash them properly, 
at higher ranks, people are going to always try and turn and play away from that. They'll know your KO from the footsteps. What you can do instead is chuck a really obvious flash down, something like that, where you know they're going to turn from it 100% of the time. But you can chuck that down, and all you do is just run in and just go in straight after it anyway. Because they're going to spend so much time trying to turn from that, that they aren't going to be paying attention to you running up on them. Now, this might seem like really dumb. Like It, it might just seem really dumb to do. But the point is, when you throw something so obvious, they're not going to expect you to do this. And maybe at uber ranks, maybe like Radiant top 100 people, maybe you're going to expect someone to do something stupid like that. But, you know, grinding up through the ranks, going Ascendant Immortal, people aren't really going to expect you to fast peek off that. They're going to expect it to get flashed properly themselves. They're going to be playing for that. So when someone does something stupid like that, they're not, they're not ready for it. Simple as. I showed you the defender sort of flash that you might use on like bind or something. But as well as an attacker, there's also important ones to do to enable your team to break out easier too. Something like chucking a flash over here is pretty perfect because what happens is, I turn from it. That flash that I've just thrown over long comes and pops into sight somewhere around here. And it's going to pick up a few people, maybe someone playing spawn, maybe if someone plays cubby, maybe if someone's playing like a rat, like a cypher or something. Same with him being here or his camera or something like that. The point is he's going to get blinded. But if that one doesn't work up long, there's also ones that you can throw from outside mid as well if you get control. Really simple ones, if you try and aim above the lines here, what happens is, if you see through the wall, that flash went and popped just up here. This flash gets people that play for elbow, it gets people that play pretty much for sight. Someone that plays here, which is a fairly common spot, or here, they're going to get blinded just that little bit. It won't be perfect, but the point is, it's an unturnable flash. Both of them on either side are unturnable. So, the thing with like maps like this, where it's really open, has high skyboxes, you can get away with using these flashes. On something like a maybe a smaller map, um, icebox inside you can't really get away with, um, but on the other side you can. Um, there are other maps as well. Um, Ascent maybe isn't that great of a map for it. It's obviously got the highest skyboxes, but the map itself and the sites are really closed in, so you can't really use the KO flashes in that sense. But for something like Bind, you've got you know the heights, you can use it. There's fast peaks off the flashes as well. You can easily flash over the top of these buildings, um, so just something to be aware of that you can flash out for your team like that as well. It doesn't always have to be through the main chokes, you can you can get a bit more advanced and technical with that as well. And just as sort of a reminder again as well, you know, the knife has a, a sphere radius. It, you know, if I go up on the map and use it somewhere up high like this, you can see how big the ball really is. And for maps with verticality, or for maps where you're trying to like grab certain places that are a little bit more difficult and you have lineups that aren't great for it, Using something like that encapsulates all of it into one. So just remember that it has the height that you can use as well. It's not always just, you know, using it so basic. Like, you've got to get away from the idea of just using your kit in the most obvious ways. Like, you've got to get away from the idea of coming out and just chucking a flash like that. You've got to get away with the idea of just using them like that. Like, unless you're playing for yourself, it's pointless. What you need to be doing is using the proper flashes and setting your team up appropriately. You need to be looking up the lineups, looking up the mollies to use looking at the knife lineups that you can use as well and using the way you're going to get much more effectiveness out of your kit something quickly as well on the knife like i said before they can shoot it so when you're doing your lineups it's important to try and find ones that land in places that aren't always going to be able to get shot so easily or maybe they're a little bit more difficult just in general to look for so when you're using them in hookah for example using them against this wall if you're worried about someone playing close is great because it's really hard to figure out where you're supposed to wall bang for them to shoot it so using it close is so much better than using it somewhere like that where it can be so easily shot because it's so obvious so just bear that in mind as well when you're using your knife make sure you're using it in places that are a little bit more difficult to be shot or you know disabled but i mean like i said before the ko molly is the same as the killjoy molly in the sense of how heavy they are so they go the same distance so if you're looking for lineups you can also use the killjoy ones as well if someone's got really good videos on them or if there's like a good website that you find that you can pick up all the mollies from if you can't find ko specific ones look for the killjoy ones they're exactly the same i'm going to show you quickly now just like my two favorite ones to use on bind because i'm here right now but i'll also then quickly go on the website and just show you a couple of the others that you can look into too I mean, this one is just like a most like basic one ever to land, like for the default plan. But it's the same as the Killjoy one. If you're just curious about it, how you line it up, come all the way into the corner of this box, and you're looking for this leaf exactly. And you just want to just put it somewhere like on the tip. That's a flash. You want to put it somewhere roughly on the tip of the leaf, and just left click press. Really simple, and it lands for the default. The other one that I, I quite like doing on bind sometimes. I'm just showing you while I'm here. Is um just here. You come in the corner of these boxes. And you're looking for just where the join is between that sort of um, antenna and in the pole. Press it, 
and it should go all the way over and land for the plant for showers. Again, just pointless ones to look at. Again, kind of pointless, but I'm going to show you some of the ones on the website now. So we're over on tracker.gg now. This is where you're going to probably find most of your usable lineups. What you can do is you go on the lineups tab up here. You go and find the agent. Like I said, you can use the killjoy if you want, but we'll go look at KO for now. You'll find the map that you want to play on, whether you're on the attack or defensive side, and you can sort it and filter it by however else you want. We want to do obviously for the grenade for starters, and all you can do is just go through all the maps that are in the rotation right now and just learn them, learn them, learn them. So just as an example, here's one for Haven C Long from the website that you can find. It goes all the way into the back corner. He aims and shows you where he puts his crosshead, show you where you need to put yours as well when you're playing. And all he does is another simple left click throw and that goes and lands for the default plan. Super simple and there are hundreds if not thousands of lineups for you to come and learn on the website. All really easy. Uh, I'll link it below. Come check it out and um, yeah. But there are also other lineups on there too. You can find knife lineups, you can find flashes. If you can't find anything you're looking for, YouTube is a great tool to come find it as well. In this guide, like I said, it was all about mastering it specifically and using the tech, how you need to use the tech. For actual lineups and individual map specific things, you should go and learn them yourselves individually. This isn't the video for that. I'll maybe make some of them in the future for lineups, but just for the most valuable information on how to play them, hopefully this guide was the one. If you've learned anything, let me know down below. If there's anything I missed, if there's any tips you've got for other people when you play KO, let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you check out some of my other videos. I've got a lot more coming out soon as well. Let me know what you want to see. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel for more. I'm live most days on my Twitch or maybe Kick. Um, all of them in my link tree. Go follow everything now. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.